Hey friends, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I have a really cool door hanger we're going to paint today, which this is actually a very, very small door hanger. I would say this is probably perfect for a kid's bedroom or your office door or somewhere that doesn't have like a big exterior door. Um, and so this past week, we actually released five new designs that are perfect for like little girls. And so um, I wanted to paint one of these live today and I was going to show you what they look like and I lost the photo of it. So if you'll give me a second, oh, here it is. I'll find it. Um, and I, I'll tell you, I had a whole plan. I was going to do water marbling on this piece, but I'd never done that before. And so I thought I would test it out beforehand and it didn't work out. So um, this is the new designs we just released this past week. And I chose to do the BU Not Them uh, door hanger. That's what it says. In big letters, it says BU. And then small letters, it says Not Them. And then these are the other four options that we had available. So you've got princesses, we've got a castle, ballerinas, and just a really fun one that kind of reminds me of like teens that says girl power, G-R-L power. Um, and so all those are available at Southern Adornments. Uh, sorry, I'm really out of sorts today. Shopdoorhangers.com. Um, and you can get those there. This design is the one that says be you, not them. And this is what it looked like before I painted it white. Because like I said, I had a whole plan. I was going to paint it white and then do water marbling on it. And it didn't turn out too well. So my sample piece um, got scrapped. And we're going to try that again at another point. But I've got to test out the water marbling on a different kind of paint because I couldn't get it to grab a hold of this paint the way I wanted it to. So we'll try that another day. We're going to go back and do this the way that it was originally intended to be painted, only maybe using slightly different colors. So here is the color palette that I have picked out. I've got two shades of purple, two shades of pink, and two shades of teal. I wanted to kind of go with this really soft, pretty color palette. I could have gone with like rainbow colors, but knowing that I'm going to be doing words on top of uh, these colors. I needed them to be um, not too distracting from one another. Like if we had thrown in a, like a rainbow of colors, it might be a little hard to read the BU depending on the colors that we choose. And so I thought I would go with this soft pal palette that kind of still has a nice variety of color. Um, Y'all say hi as you come in. Let me know where you're watching from. Hi, Pam. Hello, Elizabeth. Sorry to ignore all your comments. Hey, Jerry. Hi, Linda and Karen and all the rest of y'all. Um, so this technique, if you've never done this technique before, is going to require you to kind of paint and then dry it and then paint and then dry it. And we're going to do it in stages, okay? Um, the, the main mistake people make when they're trying to do this technique is doing all the colors at once. And then the colors are wet and they're starting to like bleed into each other. Then you kind of get a muddy mess and you get frustrated. So I'm going to put all my colors in my little um, ice cube tray here. Both shades of pink, both shades of purple, and both shades of teal. And um, if you want all the colors that I'm using for this project, just text the word list to the number that I'll, it's on the screen. And we're going to put together a supply list for this project so that you can get these exact colors that I'm using. Hi, Sheila. Hello, Danielle. Uh, hello, Texas on TikTok. Hola. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Asha says, hey, girlfriend. Hey. Okay, so the other thing you're going to need for this project is a filbert tip brush. This is a non-traditional filbert tip brush. I feel like it, I don't know what's different about it other than it's just got really long bristles, but I thought this one might be really good for this project, but it does have a rogue bristle that I got to trim real quick. One that's just not jiving with the rest. So I'm just going to cut it just a hair shorter. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to dampen our brush, get the excess water off of it, and we're going to just start with one color. So we'll go with the light pink, and we're just going to start in random places and just make little brush strokes, just like this. This is why this is great for kids, young girls, teenagers, because um, this technique is super easy to do, and it's abstract. So even if you've got a young child, they don't have to be able to stay inside the lines when they're painting. They can just put these all over, just have them do them in random spots. And we're just doing little quick brush strokes. And you can do as many as you want. I'm just going to kind of put them in a variety of places and then move on to the next one. There's not really a rhyme or a reason to it. So there we go. And then we're going to dry that. So you're going to dry between each color. 
Hey, Lauren, poolside in Gatlinburg on spring break. I didn't know you were going to the mountains for spring break, but I'm jealous now. I hope you're having a great time. <laughs> Lauren actually designed this door hanger, and she said her daughter is wanting to paint it. And her daughter is about the same age as Charlie. I think she's maybe a year or so younger. So um, hopefully Emma watches this video and can follow right along and enjoy painting this one. Hey, Veranda. Okay, so once you've got that done, you can wash your brush and we're gonna rinse it and get the next color. So the next color I'm gonna go with is um, the darker pink, which is called Fuchsia Pop. And we're just gonna start laying this in random places also. Don't be afraid to let it overlap the other pink if, you ha if that happens to, to happen. It just kind of starts to look really cool. If you try to avoid overlapping them, it's going to be, it's going to look funny. So I think it actually looks better if you let them overlap in places. Hold on, my eye is itching. Can you use a hair blow dryer or is there a special dryer? Oh yeah, you can totally use a hair blow dryer. I used one of those for years. The only reason I switched to a heat gun is because it's quieter. What was the first color? Uh, the first color was baby pink and this is fuchsia pop. So we're just putting this everywhere and I did base coat it with white before we started just to save a little bit of time. So do as many as you want. There's not really a, you know, a right number and then we're going to dry. And we're just going to repeat this process with how I'm do, I'm using six colors. You can use as many colors as you want, or you can only do three colors. It really doesn't matter. I would say use at least three, uh, four is probably even better, but, um, you know, you could do a whole rainbow and you could do this on any kind of shape. It's just a really cool background. <laughs> Sheila said, I took my survey this morning. That pink co uh, color question is a tough one. So she was talking about something we did in the Painters Clubhouse. We put out a survey because we're going to play a game during one of our Zoom calls next week. It's going to be um, a game where we need to poll our Painters Clubhouse members to see what their responses are. And so um, thank you for doing the survey, Sheila. If you're a Clubhouse member and you haven't done that survey yet, go find it and fill it out because we need the, your information for the Zoom call that we're doing. It's our fifth anniversary or fifth birthday bash for the Painters Clubhouse. How many of you guys snagged your Southern Adornments live ticket already? We announced in the clubhouse this last week that we are selling tickets to the next event in Destin, Florida this fall, September 29th and 30th. And so um, our Painters Clubhouse members are getting first dibs on those tickets. We had already sold more than half of them right after we did the last event. And so um, we have a few left. We started out selling them to our Painters Clubhouse. And then Friday, this Friday, you guys are going to get next dibs. So if you're not a Clubhouse member, um, watch for that in Friday Fab Five. We'll have a ticket um, link for you. Now, right now, if you're interested in just finding out more information about it, I did put a link in the video description here where you can um, go and read more about the event if you've never heard of it before or don't know what it is. Okay, the next color we're going to use is Purple Cow. It's kind of a really light lavender. And guys, there's really no rhyme or reason as to why I'm picking certain colors first or next. I'm just going with the next color. And we're doing the same thing, same brush. We're just laying that color right on top of the last one. Ooh, look how that kind of overlapped right there. Isn't that cool? So feel free to let them overlap, but also know that you need to like cover that background. And so if you don't put enough of these little guys on here, you won't cover enough of your white background. And if you're worried about, oh, I don't want to cover up all the light pink ones, that's okay. We can go back and add more light pink ones later. We're doing this in layers. Linda's having trouble getting a room reservation. Tell Linda I'll check on that. Linda, I had somebody else with that problem recently, and I did email the hotel and told them that they need to fix it, but I haven't heard back from them yet. So, yeah, we'll get on top of them about it and see if they'll fix it. Donna says, I haven't been able to do the door hanger challenge. I'm busy at work. I understand. It's okay. 
All right, next color is the darker purple. This is brilliant purple. And we're just going to do the same thing we did the last time, just laying it on top of the next layer. Look how that suddenly darkened it up just a little bit, just adding that little bit. And it's starting to really come together now that we've got all the colors layered. I'm keeping Aaliyah busy. She's up and down today trying to keep up with all my color changes. <laughs> this is really going to come alive when we start to add the turquoise. And we've still got plenty of white to cover, so don't worry about having too many colors on here. It's going to be fine. I'm just kind of scanning and looking for spots where I didn't put any purple. You know, like if you've got like a a spot where it feels kind of empty, you can swipe some in there. You just add a little bit more. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> Sheila says Aaliyah is awesome. She does help me wrangle all the squirrels and answer all the comments and not miss any of the questions, so we appreciate her a lot. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry, can you guys answer a question for me, like a live poll right now? When you um, first started painting, or if you're in this spot right now, what was one really valuable piece of information that you needed to know before you could start? I'm working on a training that I want to put together for you guys and for beginners who maybe never painted a door hanger before. They're trying to get over their fear. Maybe they've been watching a lot of my videos and they're afraid to take that first step. So was there one valuable piece of information that I shared with you or that you learned that kind of helped you take that first step? Answer in the comments. Thank you. Danelle, that, that color is brilliant purple. Okay, Teresa says that it's okay to make state mistakes. Thank you. <laughs> Trust the process. Okay, that that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if it's something like if it's a mindset issue or if it's like a, I need to know what brush to use. Angel says good brushes, what types of paint, and how to clean up. Okay, it sounds like though that a lot of it is more like mindset. Like you guys are having a hard time getting or you had a hard time getting past that mindset. Trusting the process that it'll all come together. What background color should I use? Should I always use white? Okay, I do get that question a lot, Judy. Okay, how to sponge the background. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Sherry says all of the above. Linda says that baby wipes are a necessity. <laughs> so trust the process, but keep baby wipes nearby. <laughs> um, Mindset. Okay. Good to know. The thing is, though, is people want to know tangible things. They want to know things that aren't mindset a lot of times. And so, like, if I put together a free training that's going to help you conquer your fear of door hangers and I don't share with you something that feels tangible, I think sometimes people are like, oh, I didn't get any value out of that. But a lot of times it's the mental work that we have to do to even get started. I agree, Angel, for sure. That it's okay to paint outside the lines. Yes. The lines are there to, as a guide to help us, but we don't necessarily have to paint inside the lines. Obviously, today, this that I'm doing right here, we're not painting inside any lines until the very end when we do our lettering. Lauren says, don't be scared to practice, just pieces. On cardboard, mixed media paper, craft paper, anything. Okay, I like that. Good tip. Uh, TikTok says that it will always come together when you're lining it afterwards use egg crates for less mess i like that all right let's do some turquoise shall we um i'm gonna start with the lighter one which is crystal blue it's also almost the same color as bahama blue so if you don't have crystal blue just use bahama blue i think that would work great look how this really changes it when we start adding this it just really changes the entire look you could stay with all pinks and purples if you like that look but I wanted it to kind of have a little bit more of a, a mixed palette. This is going to be so cute. Now, at this point, when you start to get um, this many colors on here, you're definitely having to overlap them some. But you also kind of need to look for the spaces where there's a lot of white showing and just start covering up that white some more.
So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just kind of looking to see. And notice how I'm kind of keeping all my brush strokes kind of go in the same direction. I think it just looks a little bit nicer that way. Let's see. It's so busy. I'm having to really look to see where I'm where I need another paint stroke. <laughs> Kathy says, no matter what, if it's horrible, you can paint over it and start again. Great advice. Whoops. Especially for today. Especially for today. So I will tell you something. When kids are actually better at this type of technique than adults are because it's abstract. And a lot of times kids are able to paint abstract things because they aren't putting themselves in a box and are inside the lines and they feel like they can be a little more free and creative. Kids are really better, really better at that than adults are. Um, and when I used to teach paint parties, a person would pick out a design that had this type of technique on it. And they would feel really brave at painting it until they got to the party and sat down with their paints. And then they're like, all right, I changed my mind. Can I do something different? I think I'm just going to paint it all one color. <laughs> it's like the whole thought of doing something like this terrified them and they couldn't get started. And I'm like, guys, just break it down step by step, one color at a time. But some people cannot get in the abstract mindset. You really have to just enjoy the process of painting something like this and not so much worry about what the end result's going to be and just enjoy the process. Okay. Next color is teal mint. This should be the last color you have to get up for. <laughs> Aaliyah keeps having to run for her from her no, computer over here. what I do. <laughs> do you need more in the exact yeah. center to the right? Sheila and I are worried about this spot right here. <laughs> See, there's no worrying. We can always take and put paint right in those areas later. It's fine. And we're going to get our pink. See how that light pink is at the back? We're going to pull it out again in a minute and keep layering until we really have enough of it covered. So don't worry about that. Sometimes I'm too close to it, too. So if you're like that, if you're too close to it to really see you know, if you've got too much in one spot and enough, not in enough. Whoop, see, I accidentally put those two close together, but that's okay. And so you kind of sometimes have to lean back or take a step back. <laughs> that spot's really bothering her. Um, take a step back from it. You know, have somebody else hold it up so that you can see it from far away. Walk away from it for a few minutes and kind of like admire it from afar. Because sometimes when we're sitting this close to it, we can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> what type of brush are you using? Uh, it's a filbert tip brush. Looks like this. And yes, Sheila, she is purposefully painting around that spot. <laughs> Somebody said, is that ceramic? No, it's actually MDF wood. <laughs> and you can't see it, but in the background, I can see it. There is letters that say be you, not them. So when we get the complete background of this covered, we're going to do the lettering. I had to show TikTok up close. Somebody thought I was painting on ceramics. Okay, still working with my teal. I'm adding a little bit more of that before we jump to the next color. Since my pink has all gotten pushed back, we got to pull some of that forward. And I might still leave just a little bit of white showing, but I want most of it covered. I'm just scanning to see where it needs some more of this color. Kind of like right in there. It definitely all starts to blend together after a bit. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush and we're going to dry it. Remember to dry every time you switch colors. That way you're not muddying the colors together. They're layering. Cynthia says, I love these colors. No, Sheila, I have not tried that yet. She said, have you made a door hanger using the scraper process? I know what you're talking about where you use kind of like, well, I have done it with a palette knife, but there are people who do it with like a credit card. And I want to try that. It's on my to-do list, Sheila. I haven't tried it yet. Ooh, yes. A clear foil would be really pretty on top of this. <laughs> I just now saw Sheila's comment. She's purposely painting around that spot. <laughs> I do it to annoy you. <laughs> Yeah, let's do a happy mail. Um, drop a comment with what colors you would like to try this in. If you want to use the same colors, that's fine. You can say same. 
Um, if you want to try like all pinks or all purples or, you know, school colors, you could do this. Wouldn't this be fun if it was like our school colors are like red and blue. You could do red, blue and maybe throw in a gray or something like a really light gray. It could be fun in, ooh, neons would be cool, Amber. And then instead of doing BU on top of it, you could do like go Lakers or whatever your team name is. Summer colors, yellow, red, blue. I like that. I want to see all the pictures. If y'all paint these, show me the pictures. All right, I'm going back to my baby pink because remember it's in the back now. And we're going to pull it more to the front by layering just a little bit more of it on top. And we don't have to do as much of it. We can just kind of like sprinkle it around to kind of pull it forward. You can also use this as an opportunity to like cover a little bit more of the white if you want to. I'm running out of the color. <coughs> I really like how it starts to look layered. It's cool. I feel better each time I got that spot. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I did that and I'm like, watch. This is going to make them feel so much better. I'm going to cover this spot. Oh, I can breathe. <laughs> uh, I really like how it starts to look really layered. And another cool thing to do with this type of technique is to use paint that are already a little bit transparent. So we all have those paints in our stash that we get annoyed painting with if we're trying to cover an area really good because they don't cover well. For example, strawberry pink, paradise green, and there's another one. They were all brand new um, Americana, or Deco Art Americana colors that got released recently, and they just don't cover very well, but they're perfect for a technique like this if you want colors to kind of show and pop through. All right, I'm switching back to that fuchsia pop. I'm going to put a few more of that on there. We're just going to continue to layer until we feel like we've got pops of color all around. And now, like, before you keep going, now is also a good time to, like, step back from it. And just really look. And it's like, oh, I don't have any pink right in there at all. And there's a lot of white there. You know, you can just kind of see. Which this color is a little bit um, transparent. I can kind of see some of the other colors through it. It's kind of cool. Donna says, is it Tiger Lily? Tiger Lily. That was the third one. Oh, thank you. Our happy mail winner is Joanne DeSutter Ludlum. Letitia wants to try different shades of purple. That'll be pretty. Hot pink, black, and white. That'd be really pretty, D. If you have used transfer paper for the lettering, would you put the lettering on first? No, Stephanie. So if you're using a template, I would only cut out your heart. Do this process. Dry it really, really well. Because with all these paint layers, it may take a while for it to dry. You might even want to let it sit there for an hour or so and cure if you've got the patience, <laughs> um, and then lay your graphite paper on there and transfer your words on top of the background. Okay, going with my light purple, I'm just going to fill in a few spots with it. We're almost done. I feel like we did a pretty good job covering our background. There's not really that many spots that still need covering. And you can just keep on keeping on layering if you want to keep on layering. I may, I'm trying to decide if I'm done or not. You know, it's kind of like you have to just kind of decide at some point whether you want to quit. Am I happy with the amount of, um, the amount of white that's showing? Yes, sort of. <laughs> I don't know. I keep adding just a little bit more because I'm like, eh, I kind of want to cover up a little bit more of it. But I don't want it to be so crazy busy either that you can't read the words. Oh, I didn't like that. Let's do that again. There we go. Can you explain the 
Oh yeah. They're totally different, Sherry. So um, template club is all digital. It is just the digital templates. And so you wouldn't get anything physical mailed to you. It doesn't come with any tutorials. Um, I recommend template club for people who are already pretty adept at painting. They've been painting with me for a little while and they just want more options for what to paint things to offer to their customers to teach in paint parties. And they just need more designs. Um, but they don't necessarily need painting tutorials and they don't need the wood blanks because they're cutting out their own blanks. Big box of blanks, however, it's perfect for the person who's kind of like at the, a little bit more of like the beginner stage. They're still ordering all their wood blanks. They're not cutting their own. Um, they still need tutorials for each piece that they paint. And they just maybe they also need the convenience of having something delivered to their door that they know they can sit down and paint when they have a spare minute. Um, that's what Big Box of Blanks is really perfect for. It's, and it's a quarterly subscription. Um, the next uh, time to sign up for that is June the 1st. We're going to be taking signups and the next box will ship July the 1st. So we have signups about a month before we do all of our packing and shipping. And so um, you can sign up for that on June the 1st if that's what interests you. Um, oh, that's a good point too. John, Donna says there's also sort of the surprise element. There's a surprise element to both of them. With the template club, you're getting all the templates we're going to release that month at, in one go at a, in a bundle, and you don't know what you're getting. Um, same thing with the big box of blanks. We send you three door hanger blanks every quarter, and you don't know what you're getting. Each one comes with a video tutorial and a supply list and everything, so you can go and gather your colors and just sit down to paint when you have a moment. Does that pretty much answer your question? If you have further questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to get a filbert tip brush and we're going to start doing our lettering. Okay, tip top, once you hold it up, we'll see if they can see the okay. lettering. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to see the letterings, but here's the letter B. Can you, let's see. It goes what, down here. You can see the indentations in the paint. It's a lot easier. Like you can see the bottom of that a little easier than you can see the top. There's the letter E. It's a lot easier to see in person than it is to see on camera, I feel like. <laughs> Alicia said, is it wrong to start a GoFundMe so I can order big box blanks and be a PC sister? <laughs> if you started one, there would be so many others who would jump on that train. Uh, Lauren said, it's the convenience. I cut my own, but it's even... It, that's even something for me too. I try to print all of my templates and wait for a nice day to cut. And then it's nothing for me to cut a sheet of rounds and a sheet of shapes in a day if the weather is finally nice. And so I have a stash to grab and paint when I have time. I like that you prepare ahead of time that way. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know you wouldn't, Alicia. <laughs> I know it was a joke. Okay. So we're going to get our black paint. You can do this with a paint pen. I just prefer a paint brush. And I actually prefer... Oh. I just dripped black paint on my door hanger. Baby wipes. Um, some people prefer to use a paint pen for this part. I am going to use a paint pen for, look how quickly that cleaned that up. I am going to use a paint pen for the smaller lettering right down here, but I'm going to use a paint brush for the bigger lettering. And this is a filbert tip brush. It's just real tiny. And I, oh, there's a hair in my paint. I do have to look pretty closely to see where the lettering is. So I'm going to go kind of slow. That way I kind of stay with the shape of the letters. I just realized I added that black to my paint and then I didn't stir it in. It's just floating on top of the black paint. The water in the black paint just helps the paint flow if you're painting letters just a little easier. All right, so there's the first letter. So I'm not having to freehand this. This is a font that's um, laser engraved into the wood. And even though we've painted all these layers on it, we can still see it. When you're cutting your own wood, how do you get it in a quick recipe? Uh, so Lauren is a great person to ask for that because Lauren is in the comments here and she's one of our clubhouse members and she shared a video in the clubhouse using a tool 
that um, it's like a cutting guide for cutting circles. She's, and so she might can explain a little bit more about how that works. Okay, we got B and then the word U. All of our um, door hanger blanks are cut with a laser these days. I used to cut with a jigsaw or a scroll saw before I had a laser. And so a lot of our members still cut them the old fashioned way, jigsaw, scroll saw, something like that. You definitely don't have to have a laser to be able to do this. Dixie just stops piles of blanks. She thinks she might have a problem. <laughs> It's only a problem if you don't ever paint them, Dixie. Eventually, you're going to have to find a day to sit down and paint them. <laughs> you said, oh, okay, I see it now. <laughs> what kind of paint? Oh, it's um, Deco Art Americana Matte Acrylic. I am having trouble seeing that one line right there. I had to kind of look really hard for it. I actually really like painting letters. It's very soothing. So I often get quiet when I'm painting them because I feel like it's just so relaxing. Okay, now the letter U. Sounds like my delivery may be here. I hear a delivery truck outside. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're bringing. Do you ever do that? You order something and then you're like, and then they are like, go to delivery and you're like, what did I get? I don't remember. I thought it might have been, after I got thinking about it, it might have been some chairs I ordered from Sam's Club to go out by my pool. I'm hoping that's what it is anyway. I'll be putting those to use this afternoon. All right, we pretty much got it all covered. I'm gonna get switch now to my one millimeter paint pen and we're gonna do um, really small skinny letters that are down here at the bottom and all they say is not them. So be you, not them. This is like a really good like encouraging saying for young girls who feel like they got to be like everybody else or got to look like somebody in a magazine or be like the cool kid in school. They don't have to do that. They shouldn't do that. They should just be themselves. We should all just be ourselves. It's a good lesson for all of us. I think a lot of times, especially having a business online, you know, it's easy to compare myself to other creators online and the way other people paint and think, you know, I'm not as good as them or I can't do this like like they do. But we all have our own style. Shoot. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Hello. Hi, this is the um, delivery guy. Is this the house? Right? No, um, it's the shop back behind the house. Do you know what it is that you're delivering? Is it from oh, Sam's Club? Oh, it's the shop. It's the shop behind the house. Yeah. Oh, wait, I That's okay. All right, and there's somebody back there in the shop that can help you unload if you need help. We also have a forklift back there. Okay, yeah, I see some guys out there. I just didn't know. I thought I made the wrong time. But thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> I think that's probably the first that I've ever answered a phone call on a Facebook Live. It was the delivery guy. He pulled up the driveway instead of going back to the shop. Read Alicia's comment. Okay, Alicia said, do y'all ever go to Hobby Lobby for paint and only have eyes for deco art paint? Looking at all the other brands right next to, you, to it like they are beneath you. I feel like I need to screenshot that and send that to them. That is so funny, Alicia. Yes, I do that for sure. I don't even pay attention to all the other brands. I just get the deco art. <laughs> okay. We've got our lettering done. There's a couple spots where the um, where the laser etching was so tiny that my paint pen couldn't get down in it. So if you have that happen, get out a super skinny liner brush 
and just get a little tiny bit of black paint on your brush and you can kind of go in and just kind of dab it in there. But it's really, I mean, nobody would probably know but you. So if it, if it only bothers you, you probably don't even have to mess with it. But it is going to bother me, so I am going to fix it real quick. So I'm just kind of like letting these bristles get down in those laser etched lines because sometimes the paint pen struggles to do that. Especially when the lines are this close together and this tiny. Okay. You want to see it up close? All right. I'm going to show it to Facebook first and then I'll show it to TikTok. Be you, not them. <laughs> I probably will let Charlie hang this one up on her um, on her door. She's my eight-year-old daughter. I think it's a good message for her. It's very girly. Definitely goes with um, some of her favorite colors. Dixie says guilty. I've even caught them stockpiling new paint, and I'm digging through them for the decor colors. <laughs> um, that would be cute if you got the bedspread colors on it. Mm, yeah, if you wanted to match your child's bedroom, you could totally just pick out colors that kind of match her bedspread and do that. You're envious of my steady hand. Lots and lots of practice. All right, y'all, if you want to recreate this project for yourself, you can get the BU Wood Blank in our shop. I'll show you what that looks like again. There you go. Um, and you can get it in four different sizes, all the way up to 20 inch. And then if you want to cut out your own heart, and trace your own words on just buy the template it's seven dollars um you can trace it on your wood you can the template comes like with different sizes so if you want this size print out the 12 inch size and just trace it on your wood i would recommend if you're cutting this yourself um just cut out the shape of the heart don't trace your words on until you're completely done with the background okay um, but if you're painting a laser etched blank just paint right over all those words and then you'll be able to see them through the paint afterwards to finish it up all right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.